So why have the Defiance ETFs continued to fall in share price while the underlying market has been absolutely on a tear in 2023 and 2024? Well, in today's video, we're going to go over why the Defiance ETFs have been going down in share price, but we've actually seen a positive return on most of these ETFs. So as you can see, my portfolio is sitting at $38,200 today, and it is pre-market. Well, let's take a look at my Defiance ETFs and see what my performance has been in my portfolio so far. So as you can see, we're on QQQY currently, and the share price is $16.33. All of these ETFs opened up at $20 per share. And in the past week, we could see it's down 1.63%. In the past month, it's down 6.10%. And in the past three months, it's down 8.16%. And then the max time QQQY is down 18.92%. And this is just price return. So we have to factor that in. My current market value in QQQY is about $2,500. And you can see my total return on Robinhood, which is just price return, I'm down $443, 14.66%. And it's about 8% of my portfolio. And I have 157.95 shares. So am I worried about this position? No, but we have to understand what these ETFs are and why the share price has been going down. Let's also take a look at my JEPY position, which is the S&P 500 covered call strategy that they have. And you can see I have $2,200 in here. Price return, I'm down 6.18%. So not as bad as QQQY. And my average share cost is $18.49. And a lot of people like to dollar cost average their way into these ETFs as well as reinvest the dividends, but I've decided to leave these ones alone, maybe buy a few shares here and there. Majority of the time, I'm not averaging down my positions on these. I'm just taking the dividends from them and implementing them into my other ETFs that pay me more and more each and every month that have more share price appreciation. So as we've seen in the prospectus, what we've seen in previous days of trading, these ETFs only go up about 0.4 to 0.5 percent on green days so if the nasdaq 100 is up say one percent qqy is capped at about 0.5 to 0.4 percent and of course that obviously we're limited on the upside but then we're not limited on the downside so when the nasdaq 100 goes down to three percent in one day which does happen qqqy will be down that much as well so we'll see what happens with these etfs in the future with a bear market or a market correction these could drop pretty hard pretty fast and then have a hard time to recover like i said before the defiance etfs all opened up at 20 dollars per share you could see iwmy here i do have 50 shares of and this one has also seen the price go down about 12.77%. The Russell 2000 did go on a little bit of a run and we saw this ETF hit $21.13 on December 27th, but since then it has had a steady decline and you could see exactly when the distributions have been paid out. So there was one here, it went from $20.98 down to under $20, ran up in December, then dropped pretty substantially, ran up a little bit again, and then dropped again. So you could see when the distributions are getting paid out in the charts. So I am down price return 12.85% on this ETF. My average share cost is $20.15 and I have not bought more shares of IWMY since my first day of purchase because my thinking is I'll just take my dividends out of these ETFs and reinvest them into maybe some of the single stock ETFs by Yieldmax which have greater share price appreciation potential such as Kony, MicroStrategy ETF as well as SQ why and others that have done very well for yield max ETFs. So that is my portfolio of Defiance ETFs currently. Let's take a look at the distribution rates for the Defiance ETFs as of late 55.65% for QQQY and then we could take a look at JEPY as well 40.27%. So if we do the calculation say they average 40.27% for the next year or two it would take you about two to two and a half years to get your initial investment back through the dividends because year one you get 40 percent back year two you would be at 80 percent and then year two and a half around there you would be at a 100 percent back in your dividends i'll show you my total returns with these etfs as well before we really go into the price performances and total returns overall for these etfs and you can see iwmy the russell 2001 has 
yielded 72.81% averaged annualized basis. And of course, these get paid out on a monthly basis. Usually, the ex-dividend date is towards the end of the month, and then you get paid out early the first week of the next month. So let's go into the performances share price return, as well as total return for these ETFs because they tell a different story. So QQQY in the past year, well, since inception, because it came out on 9-14-2023, 179 days of trading has happened with QQQY so far, and it's down 19.05% in that time frame. So you can see when the dividends were paid, you could see the drops as well. And in the same time frame, the NASDAQ 100 has gone up pretty substantially but these are income ETFs. They're not going to track 100% upward trend of the underlying asset, such as QQQ. I don't like when people really compare them to the NASDAQ because they're different investments. Let's do total return, which includes the dividends for QQQY, and it tells a different story. Over 179 days, total return for QQQY is up 8.83% compared to the price return down 19.05%. So you can see with dividends included, you're still up on your position. Let's also add another symbol here, which will be JEPY, and we can delete QQQY, we'll update the chart, and you can see price return for JEPY is down 13.21% in the past 174 days. Total return, JEPY is up 8.85%. So pretty good investments on a total return basis for QQQY and JEPY. That's why you can't just look at price return and say these are failing ETFs. You have to really see the full picture and take a look at total return. Then let's also add another symbol, which would be IWMY, and this is the Russell 2000. Option income strategy will delete JEPY there. So price return, you're down 13.37% in the past 132 days because this ETF came out on 1031, 2023. And total return, you're up 10.21% because they have been paying massive dividends in the past few months. So if we want to take a look at some of the distributions from IWMY, you can see their first payment was $1.25 and the last payment was $1.10. And then we could take a look at QQQY as well, take a look at their distribution. $1.10 was their first one, and then it has dropped a little bit to $0.80 cents per share, but we'll see what happens in the future. Current distribution rate of 55%. And then JEPY as well. Take a look at their distributions. Started out at $0.90 cents per share, and now is $0.60 cents per share. So a $0.30 cent drop since inception. Let's take a look at my positions and see how much I'm down or up on these ETFs. So total return is what we're going to look at because I've received nice dividends from these ETFs so far. QQQY position in my Robinhood portfolio, I'm up 10.98% and I really haven't even reinvested the dividends. I've just used the dividends to buy other ETFs. And JEPY, I'm up 8.5%. 0% in my Robinhood account. QQQY in my M1 Finance account, I am up 3.97%. M1 Finance, the reason I have it in separate accounts, Robinhood and M1 Finance, I like how M1 Finance delegates the distributions to other ETFs that are underweight in the portfolio. I get a lot of questions about that. Why do you have two positions in two different accounts? Well, that's because I like to use QQQY to fund my other high quality S&P 500 income ETFs and so on and so forth. So IWMY total return, I'm actually still down 1.34%. My market return, I'm down 13.2%, but my total return, I'm down only 1% so far. And with getting a distribution, and if the Russell 2000 does go higher, this will be a positive return. Let's take a look at my dividend log for these and see how much I've gotten paid so far from QQQY and JEPY and IWMY. So in 2023 in Robinhood, I received $380 from QQQY. And in 2024, so far, I've received $400 from QQQY in Robinhood. JEPY, I received $218 so far in 2024 and $131 in 2023. Then in my 
M1 Finance portfolio for QQQY, I received 74 cents in 2023, and then so far I've received 162 in 2024. And you can see IWMY here, I received $0 in 2023, so I started my position in February of 2024, and I received $64 there, 55 this month, and I received $119 in total from IWMY. So these have been great investments so far in my portfolio because I am up on total return. I will continue to produce nice income for my portfolio and continue to pay me dividends each and every month. So the prices have gone down with these ETFs, but what we like to look at is total return and everything looks good in that way. So let me know what you guys think of the defiant ETFs. Do you guys hold on to them or are you selling out of your positions and putting that money into other ETFs? Thank you guys for watching. If you did enjoy, please remember to leave a like and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys in the next one.